Hi guys, we're up in my workroom. I'm going to have a little look at this electric motor. In one of my recent videos, um, I actually managed to burn this out in some way or other. It comes out of a lint remover or a fluff remover and I was using it to power a little electric car and I think I put too many volts through it and it stopped working. I've got three AA batteries here. If I put them across it, nothing happens. So I'm going to take it apart and see if we can fix it. The usual way is to lever out these little tabs. Oh, let's zoom in a bit. Right, there we go. Lever out these little metal tabs. So you can slide the metal body off. That's the brushes. There's our motor. Oh, <laughs> I think I can see the problem. Don't need to go any further, to be honest. You can see it's actually melted the wire there. I think this was a, what would it have been, one and a half volt battery it was intended to run on. And I think I was using a, a LiPo, either a 1S or a 2S. In fact, I think I even put a 2S on it, so that would have been 7.2, 8.4 volts potentially. No, 7.4, 8.2 volts. 7.4 nominal voltage, 8.2 freshly charged. And we can see, can I zoom in a bit further? Yeah, we can see where it's gone silver, where it's melted. So we're not gonna fix that in a hurry. You can even see the plastic lining there's gone a bit bobbly. So that's what happens if you stick too many volts through a motor that can't take it. Actually melt the windings. Yeah. So, there we go. Not much I can do to that. I could rewind it entirely. That might be a little project to do at some time or other. I don't think there's much point in videoing me trying to undo this because where they're melted together, I'm just gonna have to break them. So I'll get on and do that and then we'll see about rewinding it. So I'm gonna cut through them. Pull off a few more in one go if we can. I'll get on and do that. These little blue plastic bits are off the end of the armature. They protect the wire, stop it, um, stop the metal armature actually digging into the wire as you're winding it round. But you can see where it's overheated, the wire's actually melted into it, that's why it's in such a poor state. That's all the old armature wire, I'll just throw that away. And then I'll wind that thicker stuff on. Obviously not as many coils or turns, just to see if we can get it working. Many years ago when I was a youngster, 
I used to rewind the motors on my slot cars and put thicker wire on. That seemed to make them go faster. But that's not really what I'm doing this for. I just want to see if we can get it working again. Just a quick point. This commutator, the plastic shaft that it's on, or tube, has got three little pegs sticking out the end, which I don't think we're going to see on the camera because it will go out of focus when we get too close. But they line up with three little holes in the blue plastic former there, or whatever you want to call that. And that makes sure that each plate of the commutator is in the right orientation compared to where the coil is. So we need to go from the solder tag back and round this one and when we've been round it we go on to the next solder tag and then back and round that one and onto that solder tag and then back round and round and end up back on the original one. I'll use this wire which I didn't want to, it's much too thick, but we'll use it for demonstration purposes. It's enameled wire, which means it's got clear coating on it to insulate it, so you need to get the enamel off it before you can solder it. Now, generally speaking, you can usually just do that with your soldering iron. It, if you heat it up enough, the en enamel burns away. I don't know if my soldering iron's hot enough yet. now got a bit of solder on the end of this wire so if I just start the first one like that and then it's actually back around there I'll push that like that way. Now I need to count the number of turns I'm putting on. I need to do them fairly well, as tight as you can, really. Um, I'll carry on doing this and go all the way round, and then we'll see if we can get it to work. Well, there we are. I managed to squeeze 20 turns on each one. And I scratched the top of the wire to get the enamel off it and then soldered it. Before I put it back together I'm just going to solder a couple of bits of wire onto these tags to make it a bit easier to connect the battery. Right, put that in there. There was a little white washer on the end there, just to reduce the friction, I guess. Spread the brushes so he fits in there. Right, that goes that way around.
like that. Right, I'm going to have to edit the video a little bit because I've flattened these batteries now. With the um, thicker conductors and lower resistance it's drawing more current and these three AAA rechargeable batteries are pretty well flat now. And it's running as you can see. Yeah, struggling a little bit. I use four AAAs. Again, these are getting a bit flat. And it's drawing so much current, these batteries are actually getting hot in my hand here. Now, I could use this LiPo, but that goes the other way. This thing gets hot. <laughs> oh, I can smell it. Yeah. So, success. It's all back together. It's all working. But with the thicker conductors, it's drawing more current. And it's actually drawing too much current for these batteries. That's actually quite a warm pack in my hand now. But it works. So, uh, was it an economic repair? No. Was it fun to do? Well, it was interesting. I hope. <laughs>